Hi everyone. Hi guys. Wow, this has been a really long time, hasn't it? Dan? <laughs> it's been quite. We're sorry. Quite a long time. I mean, what can we say? That we weren't free on Tuesday. Then there was that Wednesday we weren't free, and then. Then I had a cough. You had a cough. Um, I had to go and see a man about a dog, <laughs> and here we are. We're back. Uh, but it's lovely. It's lovely to see you. Imagine your presence on the other it's end of the back. camera. It is good to be back. And I mean, some of you have actually inquired and say, "Are we still? Are we still together? Alive? We're not. To we were never together. But are we still a, well. like a partnership?" And we are. We, we love perfume. We've just, it's been so busy. Um, but it's lovely to see you. Today we thought, you know, enough of the sentimentality. You're not American. You and they've refurbished, they've refurbished the church. They've Look, refurbished it. It's brighter. It's, it's lighter. Brighter. They've painted it. We couldn't be in here for about six months, which is one of, but not all of, yeah. the reasons. There was scaffolding. There was, there was a lot of there scaffolding. Was, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's lovely to see you. We thought we'd talk to you today about perfume, interestingly, because, I mean, it's a sort of perfume-related channel, isn't it? Wafts yeah. from the loft. We like wafts. We're in the and loft. And we're in the loft. Um, so we I should think provide the wafts. We should provide the wafts. Yeah. So what are we thinking? Uh, just a little so sort we of thought, quite informal chat today about Yeah, this is just a, like a, um, yeah, just to get back in touch. And mm. I thought we'd just have a, and also to get back in touch. Like, we have been like seeing each other and talking about perfume. And oh, we see each other very regularly. Spraying yeah, yeah. perfume. But I think this is just a, a bit of an update of what we've been wearing yeah. over the last, whatever, it's nine months. If there are any... Um, fragrances we've been wearing a lot of that we've already had or fragrances we've gone back to that which we've forgotten about yeah or new fragrances we bought just fragrances we've been really enjoying and have tickled our yeah so they sort of tickled fancy. our taste buds and and our, our sort of I don't know things that we've had in our collection in my case things I've had for a while and just not worn which I think is really nice because it's so it's mm. to always look for the new like latest thing and constantly chasing after it is i mean i think, I think a, a new rabbit hole to go down actually I, think, I miss my collection that i'm not wearing i think it's fair to say that the, the, the both of us have m perhaps slowed down a little bit in our um purchases that's yes. not to say that's not to say we're not enjoying f fragrance as much i think i think we definitely are but perhaps we just it's easy to always buy the new release and look at the new release yeah. and think oh, i've got to buy this sample set got to get this sample set got to yeah. buy this that must be better than i think i think you do that for so many years and then you step back and go hang on i've got all these great things yeah you have to sometimes you have to really live in the moment and i think that's so easy with perfume not to do i've, I've done it myself i've been on a bit of a maybe a spiritual journey about living more in the moment and enjoying them here and now and when I was always about the new per perfume, I was always about something in future and a sort of escapist thing. Yeah. So it's nice to kind of actually go, I really love wearing this that, right now. And also in this that, moment that is that kind of dopamine hit. Of yeah, like, oh, totally. <gasps> read about something, buy something, it's something new yeah. and it's exciting. You'll think of. And he arrives in the post you wear and think, this is amazing. <gasps> yeah. Right, what's next? Yeah. And what do you go back to? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a luxury that we have a nice collection and we can, we can enjoy it. That yeah. said, I am probably going to buy some stuff this week because I've... <laughs> I've got the little itch. And, and I've got the bug. Said, most of my things are new, but you know, yeah, sure. <laughs> but also, you're, I mean, Dan is far more prolific than I am in terms of like seeking out new stuff, oh, which I think is an incredible thing. And actually, I find it, I find it inspiring that you're, you know, you're always kind of looking and you're kind of, you're, you're teaching me a lot about perfume now and showing me well, a lot of new stuff. So I, we're I learning together. We're growing. We are. We're traveling. We're growing as people. Yeah. I'm growing as a people person. <laughs> Look at me. You probably can't tell, but I'm carrying a little holiday weight. I now weigh 400 stone. Or for people in America, 500 million kilos. <laughs> I'm kidding. I wouldn't Is be it alive. pounds? Oh, pounds. Yeah. It's pounds. Yeah, I know. 500 I weigh, million pounds. I weigh, I weigh a lot. Um, <laughs> anyway. Which is why they reinforce the loft with scaffolding and iron. So, what are, so yes, are you going to do 10 or are you 10? Yeah, no, no, I think, I think we do one each. One we'll, each, we'll, we'll great. Alternate. So, so I you, start? You start, you're hosting. Okay. I've got them all in a, in a little bag over here. Wipe clean bag. Um, I'm going to start with a little purchase. Uh, I keep everything in my wrappers. Wicked John. And this is, this is from our great hero and friend, Prin Lomros. Um, I haven't this It's ages, been a while. Ages, and ages, ages. It's just some, it's something I Doesn't enjoy coming back to. Um, and I, I just love these little bottles as well. Give that a whirl. I mean, for me, for me this is like a... Give you the kind of uh, he puts the load breakdown. I haven't smoked this for ages. I feel, I feel of this a, a, very, a very modernistic... Barbershop fougere with a slightly more spicy, buttery iris leaning. Totally, yeah, yeah. I mean, somehow I, it sort of puts. I me don't wonder. Like, I don't, I don't want to un un anticipate, but I, I feel in selecting some of my, a lot of my fragrances, I feel increasingly drawn to. Oh, 
classics reinterpreted with a modern twist. Yeah. It's nice to have a little mm. something extra that shows that someone has that respect of the past and that nod towards the, the sort of mm. the heritage of something. But then just this has a little got bit more, of something. I, I kind of remember this being a bit weirder than it is. It's a bit more classic than I remember. Yeah. I find it very classic. I think the thing that gives it that little edge is that slight gunpowder note that he's mm. gone for. But for me, a it's, it's a very barbershoppy lavender. But yeah, it, uh, yeah, it's it's very like dehydromycinally, like very very familiar uh, shaving foam. Yeah. Um, but with just a kind little of bit of masculine, isn't but it? But a little bit of it's like a, it's almost like it's almost like gunpowdery note. Yeah, well, isn't well, it? he's he's gone for a gunpowder note. Absolutely. That's I can't gunpowder leather metallic. Ink metallic notes, hay, absolute damask rose. Oh, that's bloody and then good. Cedar see. atlas, soil accord as well, which mm. I think might re replace what would have been a sort of patchouli. I, I feel, know, I feel, I often sort, sort of damp soil pretty, in the base. He went, well, he certainly did go through a, fra a phrase of phase of releasing lots of fragrances, and he did lots of these kind of like soily, earthy, gumpaldy, and I feel mm. he's kind of taken lots of the best elements of that and combined it with his sometimes vintage yeah. uh, nod. And he's really, yeah. You can tell this is a perfumer that has a real, a real eye out for the past and a real respect for But it's for, one step in the for where past, one from. step in the future. Yeah. It's, it's not just, there are, there are houses which are doing, um, you know, retro, unashamedly retro fragrances. This is not just that. This is retro with a twist. Yeah. I forgot how good that was. It's really good, isn't it? And I, I mean, I remember the, the day I got this. I, I went, you know, I went to Bloom and I picked oh, it up. Good. And I, I smelled lots of his stuff in the day. And I just thought, I've got to have a bottle of that. It's, it's really interesting. And it really, it kind of spoke to me. Oh, yeah. It felt like the kind of fragrances I remember growing up on. I think I, I don't know if I just smelt it in Bloom or smelt it. Oh, God, but I'm enjoying it much more than I remember enjoying yeah. it. I, I don't know if you get this. I get a slight Dettol note as well. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. a slight detail, some, something that you'd clean a varnished floor with as well. Some quality of something yeah, yeah. slightly industrial about it, but sort of done so beautifully and smoothly. But no, I mean, I mean, Scotch mm. peat has got a bit of that as well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. This is a, cl a close cousin of Scotch peat, I think. But which I also have but it's, and I really It's elements enjoy. of Scotch peat combined with a kind of classic masculine. Yeah, it's a bit like a barbershoppy Scotch peat, a bit fresher, maybe a little bit more, a bit more edge, oh, a bit more that's metallic. Very good. Yeah. Prim Lombros, I think he's, I think he's fantastic. Um, I've, I've missed, I've missed wearing his stuff. What am I going to go for first? Right, I tell you what I am going to go for. I wasn't going to go for this, but the I, I, I've been, I've been swung in the mood. And this is, this is something which we were sent a, a sample of, and it's Balenciaga. Oh, yeah, I need to smell um, that again. Ho Hang Club. Now this is, uh, so it's Rich Mitch sent us a load of samples and we did a, 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 a video. Thank you, Mitch. Rich, not, is he called Rich or Mitch? Richard Mitchard. Richard, he's not called Richard no, Mitchard. No. <laughs> I don't. Thank no, you, anyway. Yeah. Um, um, and um, we, we tried loads of things and there were a few things which, which stood out. Um, you know, some of them stood out and I thought, oh, I'm never going to get a hold of this. But this, this is one and this is just the aftershave lotion, but it's in, a, it's in an atomizer, um, which I really kind of thought, wow, this. And then I looked on eBay and thought, actually, it's still quite readily available for 50 quid. That's really good, isn't Despite it? being um, discontinued. And for me, this is just absolute mm. peak, total epitome wow. of 80s aromatic masculine sheep. I would say it's more sheep than, yeah. than the Fuja. Oh, that's really good. It's total. And, and, and I was trying to think, it's, it's, in a way, it's related. It's kind of similar to something like Antaeus, which is... Uh, uh, still available mm. uh, Monday um, Chanel fragrance, but it's this is not so a million miles away from Sheepra Palatine. Well, it's kind of it's kind of halfway between the two. I think it's so much more complex than and and it, it feels it's oh, wow. it feels so much uh, elegant. There are kind of s more sweet notes, I suppose, but yet there's a real bitter green. There's a real wormwood note. I think. I think that's really good. Oh, but uh, and, I, and I like and it's yes, I suppose it does it. You know, it feels dated. It's 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 peak eighties, but if you want to, tr I mean, and I think there yeah, are we now should time travel occasionally. I think it's a great yeah, thing. I, I mean, and and as you've just demonstrated, there are some uh, perfumers doing that now. But actually, you can experience mm. the original thing without spending that much money. Honestly, yeah. like, go on eBay. This is just the after the aftershave lotion uh, version, but it's it comes in atomized, as you saw. Um, but it cost me £50 for a brand new bottle. That's really good. 
And how many different ways are there to really, truly time travel? Not that many. Yeah, I know, you, can yeah, yeah, and, yeah. you can look around a building, but it may have been updated. Yeah. You can't eat any food from that time that's of the time because you'll die. <laughs> you know, but a perfume, you can wear something you that was stare, made all those you years can stare ago. At a, you could stare at a painting or you could listen to a piece of music, but in a way, they're, they're kind of stationary. Whereas when you're smelling a perfume, you're so immersed yeah. in, you know... Yeah, you know, and you, as you say, you are transported. This is a living, breathing thing that you can. But it's so cool. You, 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 so you smell like you're in the eighties, and bam, and you can imagine you Roger Dove releasing this for five hundred pounds plus. Yeah, well, this is not a million miles away from something like Diaghilev either. Oh, it's, it, I yeah. think it's really beautiful. It's and if that's just the yeah. aftershave lotion, I imagine it's better. The on EDT skin. is incredible. It's on skill as well, and like it's not, it's not a huge, huge fragrance at all, but. And to be honest, it, it tends to be one I, I wear more for myself. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily go out like on a hot sunny day and wear it, but like come in the evening and yeah. I thought, oh, I just kind of enjoy this. It's like beautiful, beautiful perfumery. That's so good. They're not making stuff like this anymore, are they, really? Unless people are like Trin are making yeah. sort of throwbacks. Or you pay a lot for it. Whereas this, even, even though you think there, there are some fragrances so which are, are difficult to get hold of, this is this. Honestly, could I get could I go get that on e e yeah. eBay now, like an EDT or? A I mean, that's what I did after the video we, we shot. I I went Beautiful. out. Look at that. I love it. Though. I think that's really classy. Yeah, it's amazing. Mm. Ho Hum Club Balenciaga. Did I get that? Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Mm. Beautiful. Right, what's next? I don't know you. What's in here? I've got a few things in here. You know, it's a, it's a it's a mixed. It's lit quite literally a mixed bag. I'll tell you what. We're going to go with a beloved, beloved perfumer, all-round genius, Shazam, mm. Sarah McCartney, 4160 Tuesdays. Oh, I love, 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 love this, this perfume. I think the more, the more I wear this and the more I smell what she does, it's so legible and it's so... It's kind of so honest. I can't quite explain mm. it, but she... She says, this is, this is what it's going to do on the tin, and it yeah. does it, you know? This is, I think, this is my second I up. That's so quite good. a new bottle. My, I've got one of the um, glass top ones, but... I'm just, I'm such a big fan of this perfume. I think it's absolutely stunning. So it's your, like, ambery cedar, but with this real orange, bitter, zesty... Oh, yeah, I, I, I sort of get, like, a... Biscuit. A pencil shaving, if there was such a thing as like an orange licorice. Mm -hmm. like a weird orange licorice pencil shaving. Oily, isn't it? Slightly oily. sweet amber. Mm. I, find I love this, it so much. I, I find it... I almost included this actually myself. And I... Because I have worn it a fair bit. And it's one whenever I come back to... Oh. I, I, I'm kind of immediately excited. I, I associate this with my kind of like... I don't know. Um, getting excited with fragrances. Yeah. Um, even though this is, I think it's a fair way into my kind of journey, I discovered this, but it was definitely a kind of a new chapter. It's the kind yeah. of first what, 4162 Tuesdays. I mean, when, I whenever I wear this, I feel oh. happy. I put it on and I immediately yeah. feel, oh, this is going to be a good day. It's got that super zingy pencil shaving, slightly it's bright so metallic well done, isn't it? uplifting. But there's like, that's that orangey thing, which is, because I think there are lots of woody, ambery incense things, but just that, 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 that orange, bitter, zesty... It's, yes. it, it also reminds me a little bit, I don't know if it's even vaguely similar. Sarah, I'm sure you can clear this up because I, I don't know. But there's something of that slight petty grain oiliness that you'd find mm. in Freeway that she also did. Mm -hmm. That feeling, so you've mm. got the kind of the car rubber and the heat mm. and the asphalt, but then that slight sort of, that slight sweet oiliness that it gives it, it just lifts it. Yeah. Like putting oh, a right. caper and raisin dressing on some uh, scallops. It, it, but you're, I, I'm, coming back to what you first said, it, it's totally, mm. for me, happy making. Yeah, 100%. It puts me in such a good mood. Even though it's not, I don't think it's a, um, it's not a super obviously likeable, mega accessible fragrance. I don't think, it just, for, for me, no, no. it's that, you know, kind of woody, incense-y, uplifting. It's, it's still very, I think it's still very unique. And, and It definitely smells niche. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't smell like a designer fragrance. And I have to say, I think I think I would take that any day of the week over lots of the sort of imitations of the the sort of woodsy pencil shaving 
things that are out there they're yeah. all they're all a bit of a one trick pony and I think this feels like it has the personality of the perfumer behind it and some of them which have been like uh, you know what, what are the small reasons we haven't done I mean there's so many fragrances coming out I look at lots of the Amouage fragrances which are just insane prices yeah. you know hundreds and hundreds of pounds for things which you smell them and you think Oh, that's just loads of sandalwood aroma chemicals which cost fuck all doing loads yeah. of really and there's not there's nothing wrong with sand like sandalwood aroma chemicals but when you're charging hundreds of hundreds of pounds a bottle it and, takes and, the and you're bit, trying to give people the impression that this it, what's yeah. in the bottle is expensive it's not that's uh, the thing Sarah McCartney I find so honest and her, yeah yeah I find her whole concept, her whole brand, her whole pricing packaging it's it's really straight down the line it's, yeah. she's she's absolutely full of integrity in every department that you can name. Mm. I think she's wonderful. And I love this, and I will, I will wear it lots. I haven't worn it for a little while, and actually mm. just wearing it recently again, it sort of cheered, cheered me up. You up yeah. In a dark time in my life, this was a, this was a, a savior. Mm. I might spray someone in a minute, after we've sprayed. Th there's, there's a long way to go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with female perfumers and ambery fragrances. I don't know if you've smelt this. I have never smelt this. So this no. is Byzantine Exciting. Amber. So Francesca Bianchi is a perfumer who we've talked a lot about. Now, so we've talked about some of her fragrances. She, um, she, she now has often sent us samples of her new releases. And um, some of them we've talked about, some of them uh, yeah. we haven't talked about. As it's you been can a see, while. So this is one, she sent a sample and then I bought a bottle and you can see I've already used you do well on there. I've, yeah, I, I really like this one. Now, I'd be very interested to see what you think because I, my experience changes quite a lot from wearing to wearing. Okay, immediately Francesca Bianchi. Yeah, totally. And immediately that, that's interesting because I would say the, the, definitely in the dry down is very, you get this kind of like orisy, sexy kind of dry down. But I get when I wear it, I, I get a, a kind of a variety of uh, of things. So in in some ways, I feel it's kind of a um, a celebration of labdanum. In that labdanum has like ambery facets, it has, it has sweet facets, it has leathery facets, it has beach ball rubber facets. Mm. Um, um, but I also sometimes I get a bitter merriness. Sometimes I get quite. a a, um, a pronounced cinnamon note, but then other times I get a, a slightly more powdery, irisy feel to it. The, I mean, the big overwhelming thing for me in this is like the orris butter, mm. and it, it's immediately sort of puts me in mind of her DNA. Yeah, totally, to and definitely when you get as a perfume, not her actual DNA, which I. Uh, <laughs> I really like that. It's it's very sexy. But sometimes, but weird, sometimes on me, it comes mm. across as quite bitter it's sometimes quite maybe especially on skin like the myrrh gives a kind of like a bitter almost yeah. slightly acrid burnt quality and, and it may, really makes me think of kind of thurible's and incense yeah and, and, and churchy whereas other times on card actually it, it, it's it smells a bit more kind of diffusive and and because she also lists bergamot i think and uh, geranium and i think i don't often get that on on skin i found it more dense and intense Whereas on card, I get a little bit of that, the, the, the girl, oh, I was going to say the girl, sorry, the bergamot is almost creating a girl and aid kind of feel. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not a million miles away from a girl and aid in, mm. in a sense, the kind of the roundedness and the, 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 the balance between the savoury sweet. But, on, but then on skin, the, I, get, the roundness I, I, I also get leather and a kind of castorium-y kind of leathery. Oh yeah, it's like, a, is it like a slightly so, a sort of very gentle suede no, it's not. It's not a. It's not a kind of. Yeah, well, I don't know. But some, it's not a saddle leather for me. No, but it's no, a some, soft, buttery but, leather. It, no, it's not a big, dirty like Tuscan leather. It's not in your face like that. But sometimes I get a, a gently burnished gold kind of leather as well. And and then just the sexiness of castorium, which is kind of like Ooh. sweet leather. I think this. I think this like treads the balance really perfectly between mm. sweet, savoury. Mm. But I also, think it's just it's sort of tipping back and forth. I think forth. if you wear it on skin, you, you, I, I found sometimes you get I more try, I must try that But I just, skin, you know, as you've seen, this is one I bought, I can't remember when I bought it, but in, in my collection, that, that, that's, that's a fair usage, and I find it oh, really, really re rewarding to wear. In. Oh, mm, it's beautiful, I mean, isn't it? it like, as you would expect from her, like, totally sexy. It's really sexy. But it's one I, I, 
I it's tried really a few samples of hers of fragrance and thought that's nice. I like Liberty and Neroli, I liked a few others, but this one I smelled and thought I, I kind of worked my way through the sample and I thought I need to get it. Mm. God, yeah. It's really exciting when you when you smell stuff like this. And Shazam <sighs> and the Wicked John. I mean Ho Hang as well, going back to the vintage stuff. You know, there's still stuff being made now that can excite us and mm. And if something doesn't excite us, we can go back 30, yeah, 40 yeah. years and find stuff anyway. Perfumery is alive and kicking, mm. as far as I'm concerned. Mm. Buttery, buttery iris for me all the way. Totally, yeah, totally. She's very good. I love the fact that someone has such a style that you can immediately recognise their perfume. I think that's fantastic. What's next? Like when you hear a great singer and you know that voice and you can say immediately. Um, what else have I been exploring? Ah! Another old favourite, but especially in the colder months of winter. Oh, I, yeah, I've been enjoying that as well. Oud Parao from Diptyque. I mean, this, I forgot how this opens now because they've changed them re recently, so you kind of open the box halfway through. You'll know about this if, you, if you've tried any of the recent offerings. This is, is all Oud and Rose. But it's interesting because we just have been to a shop and we've tried some of the offerings and some of them are a bit, mm, whereas this is anything but mm. I mean, Give that spirits. I mean, I, I, I own this as well, and I really enjoy wearing this. I've, I've, and this, I have to say, I don't give a shit about compliments, but this is one that every time I wear, people are intrigued, oh, because it's, it's weirdly inviting. It's sort of, it's quite out there and quite bold, but also it does invite you in for further examination. Oh, it's really sexy, isn't it? Really, I mean, for diptyque as well, when you smell everything that they're, uh, that they're offering out there, which is sort of mm. variously spicy, fresh, aquatic, you know, the, the paper one that they did recently, which is it's actually really nice, I think. Mm. Yes, it is, actually. This is yeah, very yeah. bold. This is a big, yeah, this is a big is. step for them. Oh, it's interesting. I remember when it first came out and I smelt it, I thought, oh, my God, that's the biggest, boldest thing ever. And then further down, you know. Down I mean, we, line, find things, we find things as we go, but... But it for is a main, for a sort of mainstream. It's quite, and especially given thing. the given the house, it's quite big and bold and in your face. And kind a, of beautiful of as well. It's yeah, yeah, just enough funk to keep it to keep it edgy, but not not too much that it loses its roundness and no. sort of seductive quality, which yeah. comes more from the sort of rose patchouli. And it really is a seductive rose patchouli. Slightly dusty as well. Yeah, definitely. I really enjoy it, and every every time I wear it, I do feel I do feel a little sort of halo of confidence around yeah. me. I think I would say this is quite ambroxany as well. well. Yeah, and I think that's just giving a bit of that kind of like warm glow. And I, you know, having I, 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 since starting this video, my my, and also especially since you know playing with raw materials, my opinion on ambroxan has kind of changed. Yeah, a, 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 a lot, and, and what I thought was ambroxan. It, you know, often it's actually an, an overdose of ambrosinide sometimes, whereas yeah. ambroxin, has, you know, it can be used really to just make fragrances glow like this. Yeah. And I think that's what, if, you, if you've tried The Night by Frederick Mal, that's got a lot of ambroxin oh, as yeah. well. Portrait of a Lady is like, in, uh, like ambroxin overdose. But, but they used to just make the fragrance really radiant. It's done so well, isn't it, that it, that it kind of lifts the thing. Into and I think there dimension. is a radiancy to this, which comes mm. from ambroxin. Yeah. And it's glowing and beautiful, despite that kind of like funk and growl and snarl. It's got some, yeah, it has got some snarl to it. It's, and it's kind of weirdly dark, but with a lot of energy. Yes, There's yeah, a darkness yeah, yeah, here, yeah. But it's, and it's not light or bright in any way, but it's dark with this kind of, this huge energy and this a effervescence almost. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think it really pulls you in. It's, it's mm. one of those fragrances that sort of, it it's, sucks it's you into It's lovely to wear, and I, I agree, when I've worn it, I've, people love it. Beautiful. I'm really pleased with Diptyque for making that. And I hope that they carry on making mm. sort of slightly bolder things. I think they do. I think they are, I think <laughs> they are a good house in general. They're, I do, uh, they've got some really good things, but I do think they do seem to be going quieter. And they, I mean, there's, maybe this is a, fragrance, a chat for another time, but a lot of houses are releasing these sort of skin scents. Yeah. You know, the Zara, the Oliver Jacob Patty. Anyway, something- I've got another theory about that, which what we can talk about in future. Similar, but different. What is so, this? <laughs> so this is my, my, my most recent person, uh, purchase. Da, 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 da. So this is from the house. That of was meant to be a fanfare, by the way, <laughs> from a professional singer. I should just, I should point <laughs> from that the, out. From the house of Antimal. Now I, I, I've got the kind of full presentation because I've, I've got, I've got to kind of 
kind of show you how. Wow. Like, one, of, one of my very good friends is called Amir. Uh, like, totally over the top, ridiculously over the top box. Look <laughs> That's at that. amazing. Look, absolutely hilarious. Now, I would just say, so having having seen the having seen the box. In That's the beautiful. Um, and and fill the bottle. So wow. Now, this bottle, this perfume cost a hundred pounds, new. It was from Natina, so it's grey market, but and it contains real oud. So, <laughs> thanks, <laughs> mate. It just it really it, uh, I, 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 it was a blind buy on on, on based on r reviews and people's opinions and. We should preface this, by the way. We'd never advise people to blind buy. No. But if you know the reviewers that you're listening to and you know their tastes. And you know, you know, by the way, people describe things, the sort of thing that you like. You can sometimes make a sort of reasonably informed decision, can't you? So this, um, oh, so this, interesting. this is a fragrance of two halves. Of, of three thirds. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I think you say oof because the initial smell is, ah, oh, it's kind of citruses, lavender, sheepery. It's and already then, funky. And then a few smells later, you're like, hang on. It's a rose oud as well. So it's, it's a kind of two parts. One is a kind of quite classic French, quite elegant, elegant, masculine, citrusy kind of sheep purr. Oh, that's Citrus really beautiful. Lavender, oak mossy base. But, but then also there's this rose oud. And so we haven't talked about Ashmal very much. Wow. Middle, a Middle Eastern brand. And, and I bought um, a bottle called Calab. In uh, Dubai? No, not in Dubai. In the airport somewhere. In, uh, I was going to India. Anyway, I stopped over somewhere, somewhere in the Middle East and browsed loads of Ashmal fragrances and ended up buying Calab, which is this amazing grapefruit and oud fragrance. And if you look at Ashmal, so they, oh. they farm oud, they sell oud chips and they, uh, oud, they sell oud oil. So you know when you buy a fragrance like this, you are actually getting um, oud in it. And, and, w and when you wear it, on skin especially, it does, really despite good. this kind of like French masculine sheep prayer, um feel, it, it does feel quite Middle Eastern. It feels mm. quite musk heavy. It, it feels does. thick and rich. And it feels different to the um, diptyque, which feels more radiant and kind of glowing. Mm. This feels... This is the kind of thing Amouage should be making. Yeah, but they, I mean, I mean, <laughs> if Amouage made this, they would charge like a thousand dollars. And and this, honestly, this in this, wow. like, really. I love that. Bottle. I really love um, that. I'm going to explore this brand because I I just don't know anything of them. It's immediately <sighs> animalic to my nose. It is. I mean, I mean, the oud. There's a good dose of funk the, in there. Yeah, the oud is really quite fun. Like, but but it's not it's not offensive. And and weirdly, I people have have complimented me on this fragrance despite it. You think it smells quite bold, and it. What I really enjoy is if I want to wear something bold and risky and slightly funky and raunchy, but also something which is like smart and I can, you know, like today if I if I'm wearing a suit, so I don't want to be too risky. But if people get close to me, they can smell the raunch and the funk. Because it smells like it smells like a half combination of the human the human body plus a sort of nice clean smell on top but yeah. you'll, it is i mean it is two halves in that sense for me yeah because it, it it smells it smells sensual in that sense bahrain that's one of the airports. bahrain bahrain was the airport um but yeah that's so good but it's but it's, i mean it was on notino so that's slightly kind of gray market but it was it was a hundred pounds but hey if you can buy it then why not brand new and also that ridiculous presentation you realize how much money goes in the presentation and it makes you realise how much so many of the brands, like obviously your Rogers and your, your Zerjovs, are, are overcharging when they are yeah. having a great new bottle like this with some real oud in it. That's so beautiful. It's cool, isn't it? I like that a lot. I think I'll have to get that as well. I want to explore the others because if that's the quality of that, I know. Is there any way that we can smell them in the UK? Well, I, I don't think there really. I don't think there really is, and so it is. You know, I would. You kind of have to trust. Bahrain you? Airport. If you're passing through. Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, on Tuesday. Right. What have I got? I, my collection is quite is quite tame. Um, with the hope of spring arriving soon. I mean, something Dan knows well. Ida Antler. By January Scent Project. I love this. It's kind of like a mint, sort of minty lavender. I let Dan spray them because he's so good. <laughs> it's, um, quite, it's quite tricky. What I do is I. Press down my finger and yeah. there it goes. 
It's amazing. I love yeah. it when you do that. Um, I love this. I think. I think it's, it's kind really, of it's yeah, clean and it's, fresh it's, it's and springy, not, but with something else going on. But it's not just lavender at all. No, is no, it? no. There's a green. There's a weird kind of butteriness as well, isn't there? You get a kind of buttery. I get, I get like almost a slightly burnt butter vegetal thing, and mm, very vegetal, very big, big green, ivy kind of. Or maybe it's, it's something very what ripe. That, what's that elephant leaf plant? Do you know an elephant leaf plant? No. It's like big leaf green plant you have indoors. It makes me think of that. If I was sat by a plant and an elephant came along, I'd say elephant, leaf plant, as in leaf <laughs> here. Don't don't sit on me. Please. Something slightly marshmallowy. Not overly yeah, sweet. Yeah, there's, there's a little there's a little something isn't there like a little like candy toffee apple candy floss mm. something. So like ever so slightly. There's a sweetness that's not a natural but, green. But it's not overly sweet. It never goes overly sweet. It definitely oh. stays on the kind of vegetable green. But it's just, it's... Really charming though, isn't like it? Like so many of his fragrances, it's, you know, it's, it, it's a lavender fragrance, but taken in a really unusual direction. When I, when I think about the first fragrance I, I sort of showed, which was Wicked John, which I think of as a very good barbershop-y, sort of updated mm. barbershop fougere, mm. I think okay. this is also another really nicely updated but fougere. Very, but this, this, is, this is a in a way slightly less safe but I, I think kind of in a weird way like the last fragrance I said that if you want to wear you're in the mood for lavender fragrance but you want something else a bit more a bit unusual and a bit um, you know w will keep you interested this could do it yeah this, this sure. would do it I love that I think he's great I, I was wearing Smolder Rose again the other day which is quite wacky actually yeah well that's sort of like is it sort of it's not prawn, is it? There's but there's a burnt seashell kind there's of. There's a sort of seashell yeah. thing going on in there. But I love that. I again, that's another oh, fragrance really, that just really, makes really, me really, really happy. Yeah. I smell that and I think, bam, mm. that's really beautiful. But it kind of comes back to what we said quite near the start that it's in the way it's quite kind of a classic kind of formula and structure, but just done with a modern twist. Done really well, beautifully elegant, but full of personality. <sighs> Lovely. Isn't that good? Dan introduced me to mm. this, and I, I'm very grateful he did. Mm. Lovely. Right, I'm going to do something, something in, a, in a similar vein to that, but also another fragrance which we reviewed, and then I said I like, and then bought, and I've just worn the shit out of. Um, so this is... Oh, yes. Des Centres by Les Epistres. And I don't uh, often buy 100ml bottles, but look at the state of that. I've You've gone through it, have my way through it. Um, uh, so this is our uh, friend Eugene from You Smells Good um, in collaboration with Antoine Lee and um, I need to watch his channel again I've not, I've not been watching perfume I mean, stuff recently I yeah. loved him and he's definitely somebody who I watched a lot of yeah. before we got into it but P possibly the biggest lover of Galan fragrances on in the sort of fragrance community but I fucking love I mean and, and this is kind of totally actually what we've been talking about so this is uh, so real massive massive vintage vibes particularly so i think of polo green yeah which you know if you watched our channel before that was one of my kind of like formative fragrance experiences fragrance. And, you know, and often as you like go through the fragrance experience you think oh i wish i could have that fragrance which is now discontinued or it's now reformulated oh. not the same uh, and then you get someone who kind of kind of brings so it back beautiful. to life but with a little bit of a twist so there's a there's a little bit more incense, there's a little bit more smoke, and as it dries down, there's more funk. There's that kind of hyraxy, hyracium y, like filthy, earthy. This is, this is so nostalgic. Totally, yeah, massively. This is so nostalgic. Is it a bit more galbanomy than. Yeah, it's, green? it's very galbanomy, isn't it? It's yeah. that, that bit of almost aqua green. I love galbanum. If polo green was sort of updated to now and given that slight wormwood austerity. With a bit of incense and a bit of funk. Oh, it's really good. Okay, my next thing is not going to be a million miles away from this either. <laughs> this is so good. Mm. How much is that a bottle? Like, is it sort of fairly sane? No, I, I mean, I can't, they I can't come remember from what Canada? it was. Oh, I, can't. I, I want to say like it's like 180 quid, 200. So like it's probably like $220. I can't remember exactly what it was. Not bad. It's, it's not cheap, but bloody hell, it's good. But I mean, I've absolutely... But you're it, getting your money's worth. You're getting 100 mil of something that... And it is like it's it performs, so beautiful. It performs really well. It's getting smokier on, on it, the carpet, but, but, but well. on skin, it really is. And you get this this feeling of being in the woods, smouldering fire and incense. 
and then the animalic twinkling. See that as a perfume, even if it's like mm. a collaboration with we, you know, with a sort of a YouTube person, like we've done with Sarah McCartney, and we, you know, we found someone that we actually love, and whose perfumery we worship. You can tell with Eugene, he's a real perfume lover. Oh, totally. And whoever, yeah. you know, whoever's the fragrance, um, whoever's making that fragrance behind the scenes. Yeah, you if can he's, tell he's that not going for something mass appealing. He's no, going for, you know, that's a passion he's, project he's, he's from, his, from his taste. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Eugene, that's amazing. It's, and, and I, I think that's really I stunning. I just love wearing it. And especially in the cold months, it's been such a kind of go-to for me. Oh, God. Love it. Absolutely incredible. Mm. Right, well, the next thing I have is not a million miles away from that. Oh, so, yes. from Rogue. I mean, and actually, yes. Yeah, that, that's the other thing it reminds me of, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> now... Mousse Illuminate, and I mean, it's got little bits of oak moss still in the. So, but this is an old bottle, and 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 so, so for somebody Emmanuel Cross who kind of started his brand with the premise of being Ifra defiant, yeah, he yeah. is now Ifra the compliant. The atomizer is a bit annoying, but he's now Ifra compliant. Yeah, which I kind of feel is sad, but I've not smelt any of the more recent stuff, so I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't smelt it. I love this perfume. Oh God, it's a big relation to that, isn't it? It's a very, very close oak mossy yeah. cousin. And I've, yeah. I've loved wearing yeah, this. Yeah. I've, every time I wear this, I, I'm transported somewhere else. We're really in that kind of green, oak mossy. <sighs> I mean, this, this must be kind of like wormwoody as well. And it's just mega green. I don't know it? what I was wearing, but it was away. something not a million miles away from this. When it was, it was at university, and I had this very <sighs> fun night with this girl, and we had a good time, and I was wearing something big oak mossy. I think, mm. it, was, I think it was polo green, but I think it was a combination of that and some shower gel I'd had at the time. And Quorum. I got this very... Quorum is the other fragrance. Which, Quorum, yes, which, absolutely. Which Desandra reminds me of. Almost, almost more than polo green, it reminds me of Quorum. Oh, I love this. And it, <clears throat> it's, got, it's got this weird kind of freshness, but also this slightly damp, dank... Yeah, but there's a light... There's sort of a dank light cabbage almost. ...sweetness as well. No, I mean, definitely the cabbage. And the, I think the cabbage is, is what oak more smells like. But the little, very, very beautiful little sweet sort of yeah, trail behind a, it. Yeah, Gently musky. It's not. It's not animalic in at all. But there's, no. a, there's a slight musky sweetness. Mm. I mean, Ni nitro musky. I need to. I'd love to smell. Tea. I'd love if Manuel Cross is still making this now. I'd love to smell what it's like now if he's had to sort of I'd go very, more. I'd be very interested now. I see if we're compliant because I can't. Because there's a ton of oak moss in there. Yeah. I and I don't wear very much. I mean, I've gone through. I, I guess I've gone through a fair amount of that. But you know, it's. It's w sort of one of my most precious <sighs> possessions. Yeah. I love that slight sweetness because it's yeah. never too much. I hate really, really sweet perfume. But I, I think there's That's some, just a little nod. There's some mi nitro musks, like probably mosquito and maybe are they the bad xylene. Ones? But yeah, which are now xylene's um, prohibitive. I do feel a bit funny. Do you think I'm gonna mm. I'm gonna die? Might do. Damn it! But we'll have it on film. He so died doing what he loved, yeah, smelling exactly. yeah, yeah. smelling old perfume. Oh. I love that. I think he's. I think he's a great perfumer. I think, the you know the stuff I smell. You know, Chypre Siam, love that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tabac Monsieur. there. Bon Monsieur, love that. Mm. Um, Dervish, I really enjoyed. What was the other one? Flora I Fauna tried? is one I wanted to really, really wanted to try. Yes, and <laughs> there's the Fougere. Big, yeah. The rose one. Fougere I can't remember the name of. I really want to try that. Right. Mm. I'm going to. Uh, Good okay. Smells. Another fragrance. Which is one I bought after. I tell you what, I bought it because we did a video. One of our top sixteen. Mm. Sorry, top top sixteen. Our top sixteen Gerland fragrances. Oh, and, yeah. and, and the masters. And and, and and some people said, "Where the fuck is Voldenoui?" Oh, so, so, yeah. So here, I tell you where the fuck it is. It's right here. And in his hand, right there, I can see it's it. Right here. So this is. Um, one of the, I mean, probably these bead bottles, they've got to be the most beautiful yeah. mass produced designer bottles ever made. Obviously, they, you can no longer get them. Now they're in no, the, the really them, cheap ones with the sticker just whacked on. Um, I don't know what the new Which, by the way, Galan, is a shame, and you should know from us officially on record, that is a shame. I don't think anybody would claim LVMH to be anything other than a massive bunch of cunts. So, anyway, but let's, let's just talk about this. You can still get this, this bottle on eBay. And um, I, I don't know what the, the, the new Voldemort is. Um, 
But, so this is, you, you're back to Jacques Guerlain. Mm. So, and Vol de Nuit is based on a book by, I can't remember his name, but the same author as the author of Le Petit Prince. Andy McNabb. I don't think so. I think the author of Petit Prince is probably, probably French. Um, but Night Flight, but oh. it's just, so it's total Guerlainade. So, so if you know your, your, your Jiki, your, your Shalimar, especially that Guerlainade, Guerlainade Bergamot, cumarin, funk, florals, iris, rose. So that's wow. definitely there. But <coughs> wow. this has got a, 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 twa- a little twang of garbage. No you said knows. it's got a little twat. I'm just gonna, <laughs> you can listen back. Twang. You, that's not what you said. <laughs> but there's a little twang of uh, garbage, <sighs> and there's some kind of like dry yellow florals, like Narcissus Um But fuck me, it's just absolutely beautiful. That's really good, it's isn't it? so beautiful. In, I mean, instantaneously oh. recognisable as Gellam. It smells like... Instantaneously. It smells like a million bucks. Yeah, it's like, so It beautiful. smells... To be honest, compared... In my opinion, compared to anything we've smelled so far, it just smells so beautifully composed. You know, it's as if we've been listening to really, really great pieces of music and we've just now listened to a whole, like, symphony orchestra, which is every single part is just scored yeah. perfectly. It's not a million miles away oh. from the Jiki and Mach- Machoir, is it? So, I mean, it's totally, yeah, it's, I mean, that, that, that DNA is really recognisable, but there's just that bit of green slightly... Maybe it's very softly spoken as well. It's very softly spoken, very elegant. Oh, it's so elegant. It yeah. sort of makes its presence known without shouting in any way. And got, yeah, I don't know if, I I, I don't really know if it's over showing, but you, I don't know if you ever have, have those fragrances, you know, where you wear them at home and you have um, your other half particularly react to them. In a very positive way, um, yeah, well, and, and, and so, so you therefore kind of wear them again. And this is definitely one like, you know, six panther juice. Although not obviously six panther juice, but it seems to have that effect. You can't get panther anymore. I've tried; <laughs> yeah. it's really annoying. Aldi, try Aldi. They do a good panther, yeah. and they do a good Iberico ham. So I will try them. That but, is so beautiful. But though. it's grown to be one of my like easily top five Gelan fragrances, which is really saying something. It's very inviting, isn't it? Oh, and like, it's perfect for spring, but actually I can kind of wear it all the way through the year. Yeah. It's very springy. I would say it's more springy than a lot of the other Gellers. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not too thick. It's not too, not too heavy. It has, it has energy to it. But it's not too... It's slightly e- effervescent for me. It's effervescent, but I don't think it's too ephemeral. It's nowhere near your kind of like Eau de Gellin. No, no, no. Oh, no, I mean, they're slightly, they're slightly sort of spritzes, aren't they, in, in terms of... Yeah, sort of p- performance and projection. But Voldemort. That's really beautiful. Shotgun, then. Bloody legend. I'd love to see one of the old bottles of that as well. The oh, I love. I think the, it's, the, I think the, it's the most beautiful bottle. That's I put really a picture cool. up, but it's. I keep coveting up on like. I'm gonna get you one for Christmas. Even. Thanks, mate. Um, well, so let's stick with the same house. Oh. Mitsuko, which I found the other day, having not seen for a while. So this is going to be getting a lot of wearings, and it's already had some. Um, another one of the classic bottle designs. We should just, we should remind us all at home of well, how beautiful that design bottle is. But that's now what everything's in, isn't it? Like Voldenui, Samsara. Yeah, and then the all, all everything they call the men's range, which really annoys me for a start. In a square bottle. Is in the square bottles like yeah. Abbey Rouge and Vetiver and Eritage. Um But this looks like from the from the box. It looks like it's a reasonably. This is a more recent um, iteration of this. Thank you. It's always interesting to. And I just think. I think it's a decent reformulation. Oh, it still is. Oh, fuck me. Like, it's still good, isn't it? It's amazing that there's, a, there's still a kind of real bitter, earthy, uh, almost, it's almost like a snarl, isn't it, straight away? Like, it's, got, it's got something a bit, like, a bit tart and a bit uh, attitude It grabs you, doesn't it? It's not just some soft, generic, citrusy oh, God, opening. It's not, it's, it really isn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rubber, like, I get rubbery, rubbery beach ball peach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bitter, quite tart, bitter and like, but then it invites you down. It sort of God, invites yeah. you down into some layers beneath it. It's that you know are going to sort of open up in time. It's real. It's that real. It's just what you hope from a sheep. But just being that balance of dark, like the chiaroscuro, of, of that balance of dark and light and richness and earthiness with bright, fruity, almost sweet flashes. Of all the perfumes I I wear, me. this you, is one I, that demands it demands the right amount of spraying. And for me, going really light oh. on the trigger is important. If, if I spray like once on the neck and once on the wrist and dab, I'm good. If I overspray mm. like two or three times on the same spot, 
it's very interesting i think because the top is so opulent i almost get an overdose of the top and it lingers for so long that i actually i miss that little subtle journey that it takes i, oh. I find this is one that can so easily be oversprayed and yeah. it, it, lo it loses that seductive alluring quality that it has or even like i, I feel like i don't actually with a fragrance like this which i've kind of known for a long time i don't really take the time to appreciate it and this is 105 years old now but even the, and, and this is a modern bottle this is like you know we're not hunting for the like the vintage no, no, no. i mean the a, vintage stuff is another is, level again this is stuff we can you can just get in the shops you can buy this for a very very reasonable price i actually paid i think about 39 pounds for this uh, yeah. back, back a while ago on all beauty or something like yeah. that i mean it's this is the edp i should hasten to add which i think i think if you want if you want the best of this fragrance i think the edp is the most accessible one to go for the edt is beautiful but it doesn't have that richness the x-ray is amazing but you're going to pay a lot of money for it and it's going to be a very close personal experience i think if you want if this is something oh you want God. to wear on a day-to-day -day basis i think a modern version of the edp of this is still a fantastic buy i mean if for you, the money i think it's incredible if you have any interest at all in fragrance mm. and you haven't smelt mitsuku i mean you need to try go you need to go and sort yourself out try it out i think it's really beautiful I really think I underestimate how good this modern iteration is. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's so. It's stunning. so easy to say, oh, like, oh, it's destroyed, oh, it's been reformulated. We have to still. We, we have to still be grateful that the thing is being made, and mm. there's a lot to appreciate there. And I tell you what, in ten years' time or twenty years' time, people will look back and go, "I've got this vintage bottle from 2023." Yeah, <laughs> and it's amazing. You know, people, because this is the way life is. We always assume that we're in the. We always assume that we're in the best of times or worst of times, depending on your outlook. The grass is greener. Yeah. There? That's beautiful. Special stuff. God, where to go from Mitsuku? Jesus. Um, uh, where can one go from one of the great masterpieces of all time? Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with something which is become almost my favourite scent to wear. And, I, and it's one we've talked before about. Oh. And we had the perfume while we were talking about it. So I've got that in my This bag. is Nimitir. So this is one of the first Prin Lomont's fragrances we reviewed years and years and years, and years ago uh, and, and he discontinued it and then he re-released it on this line and I was so excited by it and it, it really is oh, I mean it's a it, masterpiece isn't it it's a difficult thing to say but almost if I could keep one fragrance so this is the, the second of these bottles I bought in the last couple of years and oh so it's it, I will always have a bottle of this in my collection I think and I've, I'm on my second bottle already and when that runs out I will definitely buy another one in fact, I might buy another one soon because Jesus Christ, you never know Fuck with these. Me. So um, it's so good, isn't it? So it's aldehydic, masculine leather sheep bra. It's difficult. It's difficult to describe. I mean, there, there are lots of other things like, and as we said at the beginning, there's you've got your Bohang uh, Club, which is a classic masculine aromatic sheep bra. But somehow, what he's done with mm. the the like, the aldehydes in here they're so prominent and so kind of searing <coughs> but just offset by such kind of bitter richness yeah and leatheriness i don't know the two things are just if if either one had gone the other way it would have been completely over the top it's perfectly balanced but it's somehow you've got two really strong you know again it's your bright and your dark those two things competing so aggressively but just about coming out in balance yeah the, i have this has some very special associations for me and oh. it, i mean it's it's sort of it it puts my mind into a certain special place and i have to say i love it oh and also again that nod that nod to the vintage i mean i have oh, to say nod, this is nod. the biggest relative i can think of of this is vintage derby yeah by yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all the other but i think this actually has even more personality I mean, and the aldehyde accord really reminds me of Picavaya Dama by... Uh, oh, yeah. uh, um, also by him. From oh, Zerjof. No. Yeah. It's from Zerjof. Um It's almost a love child of Gelan Darby, which is an amazing 80s leather, masculine sheep, leather sheep pro, and Picavaya Dama, which is interestingly a kind of, um, what is it, like 2010-ish it came yeah. out originally um, from Zerjof, probably cost a million pounds. Oh, it's so beautiful. Aldehydes cost nothing. Why would it cost a million pounds? It's just, it's so balanced, isn't it? It's still really modern, still very, like, still very relevant today, but such a nod to the, the thing, past. It, it, it's a real nod to the past, and it's 
it's you're just vintage lovers delight but it's not quite it doesn't smell mm. quite like a vintage fragrance there's a bit more spice and funk in there this is, i mean this is by a country mile my wow. most complimented perfume that i've ever mm. worn yeah, yeah. every think. time i wear this i get so much i mean I, like i said earlier i don't care about compliments but it it's always nice when someone it, says yeah. i love what you're wearing and i i this one this one every time without fail oh, magic print does it again huh it does it certainly does genius yeah, I must buy another bottle of that because I'm actually running a little bit low. What do I have left? I have a few things. I've gone... Do you know, I want to go back again to something a little bit classic. Because um, I've been wearing very simple oh. things, but things I've enjoyed. Aramis similar, 900. Not a million miles away. Not a million miles, a million miles away at all. Um, and I sometimes wear this... I wear the sort of... I don't know whether you'd call it the older sister or the cousin, but Aromatics Elixir. Uh, but Aramis yeah, 900 yeah. is from uh, Bernard Chant, and he's... You know, he's the guy that made We've done a video Aromatic Selector as well. And I love this. And what's I mean, this, this is like so beautiful. Or that, I think I got that for about 20 quid or less when I got it. Oh, it's so, it smells so expensive, doesn't it? Beautiful, think, yeah. I mean, it's, it's really, it's really fantastic. It's so beautiful, it's so, so elegant. elegant. I mean, again, just textbook kind of masculine 80s um, sheep row. Slightly herbaceous, you know. Yeah, very more herbaceous. If you compare it to the, the Balenciaga Hohen Club, it's it's brighter, a little bit more kind of citrusy. Maybe slightly boozy, like sort of slightly syrupy cider or something. There's a kind of like sweet syrupy, almost ever so, more of an indolic quality as well, like deep jasmine quality to it. Oh yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's what I mean. I get a bit of rose po poking its head through there. But also, what what makes me realise about all these, especially eighties aromatic sheepers, they're all they're all and having seen some formulas of some, they're massively patchouli heather. Yeah. And you don't really realise it necessarily, but if you think patchouli and you go, yes, there is that deep dark leafiness underpinning everything, yeah, and and and, and it's pretty. It's the legs on which you can then build yeah, a Yeah, totally, a sort totally. Of tower, it's the kind it? of big dark body. On which, you know, as I said, we can add all that kind of brightness. I'm the big dark body. <laughs> this, uh, it's so beautiful. We have a tagline. But I, I love, I mean, I love mm. the fact that this whole range, it's sort of, it's like, it's, I mean, you look at the description there, it says herbal cologne. But I love the fact that there's, you know, there's man, this, there's New West, there's Tuscany, there's Devon. It's, you know, not, it's not niche, it's the antithesis of niche, really. Yeah, it? it's it looked just like a, a good designer range that was widely mm. available. Utilitarian, for every man. You know, for, a man, yeah, for a man to say, okay, I've got a nice little selection of things. You could buy, you mm. could buy five bottles of these for 100 quid and have something nice for the entire year oh, round that would, that, would, that would work well for you. And you'd smell bloody good every day. Love it. I think, that, I think that's you know, not to be sniffed at. Um, the lot smells really good at the moment. I can't, I can't help it. I've got, I've got to stay in this slightly kind of vintage world. We, we have gone into a vintage world, haven't we? And, and, and another one where we, we, we did a video review of this house and then I smelled it and I thought, I've got to buy it. And this is... Oh, yeah. Bet from Eris. I've not smelled that for ages. So this is another Antoine Lee fragrance. So we're still in our kind of vintage sheet. Who made Riem, kind of for, for instance, for Elder and things yep. like that. As well which as... Which is incredible. As this one's got. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, this is kind of vintage, and as as the, you know, the name suggests, Mabet. A lot of this line have this dry, funky spice mm -hmm. running through it, and I, I feel the dry, funky spice is a very, oh, very yeah. prominent. This so you're gonna when you smell this, you're gonna think Kuros. There's a definite re relation there to it. Odd, isn't there? And it's particularly Animalis, which is this um, base. Oh, yeah, which it's is, po poking through now. Which is a, 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 is a big part of Kuros and a big part of lots of 80s, 90s masculine sheepers, isn't this? It's that really funky. So I know you've described it as the um, wow. toilet cube. The thing. toilet, what do you call it? Yeah, the, uh, the, Euro, the soap the Urinal cake. Yeah, urinal those urinal cake, cakes. Yeah. Which doesn't sound very attractive, but... <laughs> no, and it's a shame because cake, we love cake and we love to pee, but the two things together should never, never meet. But there's that kind of dense, spicy core of kind of like coriander seed. Oh, it's good, isn't it? Oh. The, do you know, it reminds me of Kuros. It reminds me also of another thing that reminds me of Kuros, which is L by Arquiste. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Really, really quite funky. 
Oh, but when like, I mean, when I this is also this is mega strong. A few times I've worn this, and people are like, "Fucking hell, what is that?" Yeah, it's <laughs> it's, it's, it's really, a beast. It's a you know, as the name suggests, it is a big yeah. beast. It's powerful, but it's beautiful. It's elegant. It's and again, it's as we it's really guess our kind of well. thing we keep coming back to. It's it, it, it's 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 retro, but it's innovative and. It's really and it's touching. kind of Kuros on steroids, but yeah. it's like, it's the, you know, it's vintage Kuros on, you know, vintage Kuros is so difficult to, to get a hold of. That is something which is yeah. really expensive on eBay. So it's kind of like vintage Kuros on steroids. So if you like that. I mean, I think, I think this is the kind of thing that I would spray happily under my shirt and maybe one on the wrist and know that I've just got this little, I've got this little force field around me or something really punchy. Face. 12 to the face, one, <laughs> one in the eyeball. That's, that's just so good. It's really good, isn't it? I love perfumers who are making vintage stuff. I know maybe we bang on a lot about the slightly vintage things, but I think I think a lot of great perfumery has mm. has been and gone, but not necessarily gone mm. because it's still inspiring stuff. Love it. Oh, it's really good. Right. It's kind of addictive, actually. How have we done? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Jesus, we've got three more each. Three more each. Wowzers. Um, so that's quite, that's quite funky and it's kind of got something slightly animatic. I'm going to give something that's not really animatic, but has a little bit of funk, which is an old classic, which again, you will all know well. But it's, you know, it's slightly rough around the edges in, in a like good us. way. We are, we are rough around the edges. We're a bit of, we're a bit of rough, as they might say, in, in a sort of documentary I'm about more sexy men. I've actually got a 200 mil bottle, bottle of this. Which actually stops me wearing it because it's so big, and like, I can't like. He can't spray it I because his it finger's not big enough. It's but good, you know, this is this is this is one of these seventies powerhouses that was. Um, oh, it's beautiful! It was it's, kind it's, of uh, it's my of the time and eponymous, like kind of aniseed. I I find it so fresh and herbaceous. Yeah, it's much more. But it's, and it's skin, it's all these rough got, edges, kind of like searing and. But so, definite, I mean, like, there's a definite, like, dihydromycinal barbershoppy shaving yeah, foam um, yeah. familiarity to it. A design to make yeah, a man really. sort of feel like he hasn't gone a million miles away from just having a shave yeah. and leaving the house. It's just enough Pot to augment. What, and some jeans. Yeah. Hmm. It's enough to sort of augment what's already there on his skin. Oh, it's great, isn't it? Junipery. Yeah, junipery, herbal. Um, I mean, oak moss is not the real deal in this anymore, but no, just but, what lingers but, but in the, the base is nicely done. Probably loads of patchouli again. Yeah. Like, um, God, it is beautiful, isn't it? It's slightly so minty. I'm almost getting like yeah, just yeah, slightly yeah. little oh, hints of minty. It's peppermint perfectly. more than spearmint. Yeah. Because it's kind of bitter, herbaceous mint rather than. It's fucking again, crazy, in that galbanimy direction of yeah, quite, it's sort a little of bit. quite serious, austere. Oh, I think, really I, I, think it's, I think it's so good and it's so cheap. It's it's like I'm uber uber cheap. Yeah, I, oh. I love it. I, these are things. These are things which now because I've actually moved place recently, and these are things which only temporarily. But these are things which I I have with me at the moment, and are kind of easy easy things to reach for. You oh, know, I can. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. And the good thing is because I have less of my collection at the moment, I'm wearing things more often. So getting mm. to repeat so things after a few days. Well. Again, ooh, it's good to remind yourself of it's how. It's dirt cheap. It's, it's, you know, it's a real bargain. I think mm. like 20 quid, probably 20, 30 quid, you can still get big bottles of that. Magic. Oh, that's so good. Right, I'm going to go, I'm going to try and go for something completely different because I feel we've been going around the same area. So this is, I mean, it's not that different. It's, it's a house we've talked about, which is January ah, 7th project. Yeah. But this is gone. So now this is, so, especially while I've, why I've included this is because I've, I mean, I've included it because I've really enjoyed wearing it. I've also, I would say this is one of my most complimented fragrances, mm. but it's also just not the sort of thing I would go for at all. On paper? Well, on paper, it was called Gone, and there was mention of incense, so I thought it was going to be this kind of spiritual incense fragrance, whereas in reality, it's a sort of green, like green, like bell pepper, and blueberry sweet synthetic musk kind of okay. like it, 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 it's just totally really not what, what I'm, have you smelled it before I think I have but I can't remember but it, it smells like peas a bit like sugar snap peas oh, yeah or mange too <sighs> 
Like it, uh, it's so it's such a million miles away from everything else we've smelt, isn't it? Do you know that is like to me a very, very, very I, I mean by a magnitude of five hundred, a much better version of something like Silver Mountain Water of Creed. That inky black currency, metallic. I get yeah. I get a real inkiness. Yes, yeah, there is ink. Yeah, I get yeah. a sort of beautiful inkiness and, and greenness to it. I mean, I had thought kind of blue. Very inviting. Like blueberry, almost grapey. Yeah. Is Silver Mountain Water? I can't remember. I don't think. Uh, I never thought of Silver Mountain Water. It's been ages since I smelled it, but. I mean, it's already going in a, in a different direction, but just that opening, I, it was like a, a thousand times better, but I could see. But do you not get like a Mange 2 peas, sugar snap peas? I do. I get like a. I get, but I get the flavour of them rather than the actual taste of them. If you, mm. if you gave me a jelly bean that was like Mange 2 flavour jelly bean, mm. like very uber bright green, I would. Uh, this is what I would say. But also a lot of kind of synthetic fluffy mm. white musk as well. It's not like musk, dirty musk. No, no. Or vintage, like it's quite modern, soft, fluffy, which is very clean. Quite, quite, yeah, very, very clean. Very kind of laundry hint of kind of. Oh, that's really lovely. There's some kind of like milky synthetic sandalwood. I, I like. I'm saying. Syn I don't mean synthetic in a bad way. I actually really like it, but it's, it, it's it doesn't beautiful. smell like. It doesn't sound, smell like sandal at all. I mean, it, it smells, smells like, it smells very, very round and natural to me. Yeah, if, I, I, I would say it definitely smells round, 100%. I wouldn't say it definitely smells natural. I love it though, I really love it, and I love wearing it. Mm. Wow, I, I've never smelled anything quite like that. I yeah, think. exactly, and, that's, and, that's, and I think that's why I enjoy it. Yeah. Because it's so, especially, you know, we've, we've talked about all these big like heavy vintage sheep uh, these are powerhouses aren't um, they yeah that that slight sort of gentle sweetness I really like in this and it's it's sort of legible if you you know you say peas mm. or something green I can I can totally picture it but it feels modern doesn't it it doesn't yeah. like very modern kind of abstract as well it doesn't feel uh, you know I, I feel it's definitely stepped outside the classic perfumery that we've mostly been talking about. It's abstract without being weird. It's not like abstract in a sense of doing something really wacky mm. and sort of daring. Mm. I don't think it's daring. It's just really beautiful and interesting and, <sighs> and person, you know, full of personality again. I, would, I, would, I mean, I would wear that any day of the week and I would also love to have... Oh, I love it. If love there it, was any accompanying sort of shower gel or yeah. bath soap or something, I would love to wear that. I'd love to be immersed in this smell all day long. Yeah, it's good. It's really mm. good. It's so nice to wear, yeah. And, and people like have really loved it. That's, I think that's fantastic. I'm a big fan. Gone. Gone. Right, I've got two more. Both of which, again, Daniel knows. So, Eritage, Gelan, I just... Oh, I think this yeah. is so 100% dependable as a beautiful thing of its time. For, this is from the 90s. I mean, I, it doesn't look like it, but I have actually worn a little decent Is that the EDT chunk. or EDP? This is the EDT. I have the EDP as well, but I actually now prefer... I prefer the, the EDT. EDT. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's got a bit more life to it. I had the EDT for years and then bought the EDP and thought, no, I prefer the EDT. Yeah. And I've had a similar experience with Abbey Rouge as well, actually. Sorry. And I prefer the EDT, but I initially tried the EDP. Fuck, I still love the EDP. It's a total class, though, isn't it? It's awesome. Kind of like peppery, zesty... Oh. I mean, it's, it's so 90s as well. This smell really yeah, yeah. takes me back to, to my secondary school days. Oh, it's that amazing. Beautiful, sand, gentle sandalwood in it's the base. It's amazing. Very creamy. I, I'm getting a real relation to the Atsara, actually, having s smelt them. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it's much smoother. It's smoother, sibling. premium, more sandalwood. Oh, it's and again, really just straddling the slightly up. sweet, savoury. But you can also, going back to that, something like Voldenoui, you can fill that girlinade. <clears throat> yeah. And I think a lot of that gelinade is bergamot, basically just a a adding kind of space to it. Yeah. And sheen, a certain sheen. Yeah. As opposed to a lot of fragrances, Isoe Super would add the space in Gerlain. Bergamot adds the space, which is still a fruity woodiness. Yeah, in very simple terms, I sometimes oh, smell really a thing. Good, it? uh, it's something I sort of say to some of my students when I'm coaching them as well. And it's really basic, but I think it's a, wor mm. a worthwhile question. Are you happy? Sad? Are you in the middle? You know... And it, when I smell this, it's immediately a smiley face. Oh, totally. It's yeah. A, yeah, it has a smile. Yeah, yeah. 
so, like some some things that we smell here are actually quite dark and heavy and they're sort of growling and they're frowning this is it's all bright it's all sparkle but then with enough behind it that you know it's oh. going to sort of invite you down its you know sort of down its yeah, rabbit yeah. hole to see what happens in a few hours time not particularly hugely complex but just very beautifully <sighs> yeah, blended and yeah totally like totally beautiful and, and, and very very natural smelling even though yeah know, i'm sure for the price it's 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 far from all natural but but it's, i mean it's, yeah. a, it's a really reasonable price and i think a beautiful example of what they what they were doing amazing that heritage vetiver yeah i think jean paul Gaulle, isn't it is yeah it? yeah absolute genius amazing mm. right um for me next what one, a good selection big box. that is a big box ah yes comes in a big genius. box hasu no hana by christmas so hasu no hana does it mean water lily in japanese yeah um so this is the British House this of, is the of, oldest of Grossmith. Yeah. yeah, so is it is it 19th century or is it turn of 20th century? No, this is 1888. Yeah. So it's a very, very, very old uh, fragrance. The one year before Jiki, actually. Which is uh, recreated in the uh, 21st century. And this has become, I would say this alongside... I've kind of got this Chypre Palatin and Ottoman Empire by Risa Dori, which are my three real, like, special occasion mm. fragrances. So if it's like, you know, Christmas Day or someone's wedding. They or, are incredible, aren't in they? In fact, well, last time I wore this, I was singing Verdi Requiem, which, really oh, nice. which is a really cool piece. And I thought, um, um, big dramatic piece. Um, you've got this, haven't you? I have, yeah. yeah. One of my favorite things in the world. But, oh, I mean, oh, we use, it's just total elegance, total Amazing. luxury. And it's interesting, I mean... It's a cousin to La Bleu and, and uh, that sort of... And, 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 and a distant, distant relation to, to um, Mitsuku. Yeah. But there's more fruity, there's much more fruitiness in this. Yeah, this is a bit more raunchy, actually. Yeah, there's something a raunchy, something more, sexy. Yeah. Quite, it's quite musky as well, I mean... Oh, I feel there's wow, some wow, definite wow. musks doing kind of some heavy lifting and providing kind of rounding... That's oh. incredible. That's really incredible. <laughs> it just, yeah, it, uh, it, it, yeah c compared to that bottle of Mitsuko, this, I think, does feel a bit thicker, a bit richer, a bit more op opulent. Mm, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a little bit more sort of, I don't know, facing north, east, south and west. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a bit more, it was a bit yeah. more floral than Mitsuko, I would say. Yeah, a bit more, more powdery. A little, yeah, definitely. More dandified. Yes, yeah, yeah, definitely. There's definitely a, a powdery, musky, not talcum powder, but yeah, but yeah. Maybe a little oh, bit of talcum powder, yeah. So good. I've, I've forgotten oh. to wear this for so long. Oh, it's so good. I really love it. I mean, it's, it's the kind of fragrance that when I wear it, I feel like a, you know, a total, like, rock star. Well, not rock star, that's wrong, but, like, it, it makes me feel like a million dollars. But really. actually, this is the kind of thing I can imagine someone like David Bowie absolutely loving. Oh, yeah, totally, yeah, you yeah. Know, just sitting there, coming up with some absolute genius song. Yeah. It's funny, isn't it, that, mm. you know, the fact that this is... this. I mean, this is the oldest fragrance here. And sort of, oh. a, a, you know, a relation to Gerland. And they went in slightly different directions. But actually, you still respect the heritage. You, well, they kind of stopped. <laughs> but they're still making stuff now, you know, uh, yeah, under, yeah, new, yeah. under new sort of... But they're not owned by LVMH entry. trying to no, make God. billions of dollars. Which is probably why they smell really great. Yeah, long, may it, long may it continue. Anyway, love it. Special fragrance, special occasion. So my final one is, again, it's actually, it's, it's an interesting one because it's from a very old worldy sort of aesthetic and shop. But oh, yeah. this is actually from the year 2012. Is that when it was made? Yeah. But I'm going to buy another bottle immediately <laughs> after having dropped it. Well, this is interesting. So this is another one. I, I bought another bottle about six, nine months ago because I finished. This is definitely, I will never be without. This is... This, and this is, you know, this is the, this is the larger size bottle. <laughs> yeah. Because I just, I know that I'm going to go through it. I've been through so many bottles of this over the years. But, you know, for something made in 2012, I think this thing still smells so vintage mm. and so sort of beautifully of its time. Oh, oh well, the time is it, it, I mean, it's so good, isn't evoking. it? Yeah. 
So it Absolutely has, beautiful. It has all the creaminess of Chanel Egoist, but there's also something more zesty and exciting about the top. It's not, yeah, it doesn't punch its weight around like the Egoist does a little bit, I think. Oh. And it's not so animalic, but actually I like that. I think, I think the vibe of this is very much oh. my suit and tie, freshly shaven. Yeah, totally. You know, feeling, feeling pampered. But it smells, Hot towels, like, it smells wet so expensive. And that's, I think, you know, what... Mm. I think they're a great house. Actually. What so many modern fragrances, and maybe this is something we, we'll talk about, we may even devote videos to, is uh, they are really, really dominated yes. by certain really, really powerful aroma oh. chemicals. I mean, the, um, the Frederick Mal, what's it called? Um, un is it Uncut Gem? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, I, I don't know if people have smelt that, but it's so obliterated by a brosonide. But a brosonide is such a strong material, and I mean, and when I say strong, I imagine it's only 0.5 percent of the formula or something. But even so, that that it's amount is it, just it completely obliterates the entire thing, and all you can smell is a brosonide. And often, yeah. if you walk down the street, down Oxford Street or a busy high street anywhere, you will. There are certain aroma chemicals which smack you in the face, yeah. and just. And, and that seems to be a trend of either perfumes which are obliterated by one thing or these kind of skin scents, nothing you fragrances. Yeah, very little in the middle that actually whereas evolves this, on whereas skin. Whereas this, this just feels, I mean, it's a cheap fragrance. Of course, it's not an unnatural fragrance, but it just, it just feels really well composed. And it just, it works, it works so beautifully elegant. on skin. Yeah. And I have to say, I think the whole range is interesting. There are some things which I don't love and there are some things which I adore. Eucharist, I think, is amazing. Yep. Paisley, I think, is amazing. Paisley's Spanish good. leather, I think, is amazing. The Eau de Portugal, I love. The limes, I love. I think that's really beautiful. GFT, they're sort of eponymous. That's one of the most recent beautiful, ones. fresh. Havana, I didn't like, though. No. Havana, I didn't like that. It smells like, what is it? Not one million. Something shit like that. Anyway. There's something, you, yeah, yeah. something you didn't agree with. But, but I, this, I think they're really great. And brilliant. you get yourself down there if you ever get a chance. Or go online and you order yourself a nice... Maybe not ladies, but gents, order yourself a nice wet shave kit. Will they do a shave, do do a shave down there as well? Well, probably. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you, I, I'd struggle to ask them if I yeah. went in there, but I imagine <laughs> they would. But, you know, it's, it's the whole aesthetic of the place is really nice. Mm. Lovely. I think, I think that's beautiful, and I, I will never be without a bottle of Trumpet Sandalwood in my collection. So, my last fragrance is sort of one which is in a similar vein to everything we've talked about, mm. really. Um, but it is one of, and it's also one I wanted to talk about because the the brand owner has just um, he's just died, he's just passed away. This oh, is really? I didn't know that. Slight of Fern by uh, Mask Milano and I've Alessandro this, Brun um, has just really sadly passed away. And I wanted to talk about it because it's it's a house we've really not mentioned very much no, at all. No. But Tango and Hemingway, we've sort of Tango touched on, and, we? and Hemingway, Russian tea, Russian tea, um, I really enjoy. Um, but, I mean, they do a lot of... Good, I quite like the whale one as well. What's the whale one? I don't think I smell that. Like, is oh. it sperm whale or white whale? Oh, anyway. a, a, a lot of good fragrances and really not silly prices at all. So, this is Fern. So, obviously, you're getting a, a fougere. And this is... Um, oh, what's her name? Is it... Sylvie Bedouken? It's, it's the you. same perfumer as Invasion Barbar. Oh, Della... No, it's Sylvie Bedouken, isn't it? I'll, I'll put a name up and a photo up, but this is the same for MDCI. So, and if you if you if you, if you remember Invasion Bar, yeah. it's very 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 similar. So you kind of got this um, uh, geraniumy, coumarin-y, lightly sandalwoody lavender fougere with a hint of spice, hint of mastic. It's got that kind of like almost medicinal mm. twang to it. Yeah. Um, hint of spice, hint of sweetness. It's not it's very good. It's not massively revolutionary, but it, it feels like some of the the fragrances, like for Atsaro, for instance, just wrapped up in a slightly more elegant musk yeah. to make it a little bit more. It feels a little bit more luxurious. Yeah, it's way more inviting, isn't it? I think not a million miles away again from some things like the Mousse Illuminate, that that sort of oak mossy green Underbelly, fresh. Yeah, yeah. But it, but it, I, I think it has something of the uplifting quality of the, yeah oh very it's very accessible and, and easy wearing but 
as you were saying, the SRO is amazing, but a slight kind of, there's a slight roughness around the edges. Whereas this feels almost like those edges have just been refined. Yeah. And it's about, you know, a third of the price of Invasion Barbar. Oh, it's really good, isn't it? Uh, you know, I, I, I really enjoy wearing it, and it's, it's one I've, you know, you can see, it's just a, it's a real, it's, it's a, a kind of dumb reach. Really it's a, it's a really house, easy actually. one to, to kind of go for. And also, I just wanted to mess, mention, because of a Yeah, that's a shame, I didn't and, know and that. It's a house we've not, we've not talked about, so I just wanted to give it a bit of... Yeah, well, we should come back and do some, some sort of chat on the house, shouldn't we? And yeah. try, some, try some more of their, of their offerings. Anyway, there we are. Beautiful. Yeah, it's a nice little selection of things, isn't it? I think I think it's interesting to see where we've been drawn in terms of our taste, that we've gone in a mostly kind of vintage, kind of nostalgic yeah. um, uh, 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 well, way, world. Um, what have you been wearing? How do you feel yeah. about what has come out in terms of perfume releases, designer, niche? What has yeah, I've, not you? Ca- I've sort of gone for a grand scale every now and then and have a look, but I've not... I've, I've not been, checked it out for a while. And I'd be I have quite been keen. trying things, and and uh, yeah, there was just I'm, I'm you know, you, you, the likes of the Amour since it's been rebranded, and and they've been like hemorrhaging new fragrances, and I keep smelling them, and they smell like fucking shit. I mean, they, yeah. I mean, they are to- people who are spending that money on those fragrances. They, they are totally, they're totally like obliterated by. They're so powerful, and they're so dominated by certain cheap things. And if you want to smell fucking powerful, I mean. It, <laughs> You can do it at half the price, right? Put you? like petrol in your face. I don't <laughs> set yourself on fire. I, no, I don't think that would work. It would give it a sort of smoky aspect. I guess. And maybe we should do a video of uncut gem because that is fucking shit. And it's it's not. I have not it, smelled that. Oh, it's I don't so. Think it's, it. I can't believe it's so offensive. And and the price. Anybody who's spending that money on that. I remember I went to smell it with a friend who's sort of interested in fragrance and like he, he doesn't mind mending. He would spend like 150 quid on fragrance if he liked it, but he smelled those like. It smells like toilet cleaner or Lynx. What, what the fuck yeah. is this? Like, it's total trash. So I wore Bigger Art Concentrate the other day, and I loved it. And I remember, you know, I remember all those early days, Masquerade Vajar, Geranium, yeah, 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 yeah. Portrait of a Lady, yeah. you know, the least Mediterranean, um, French Lover by Pierre Bourdon. Fantastic yeah. fragrances. Like, really daring. Yeah. Before someone got their hands on the company. But, and also as if, yeah, exactly. And as if they thought, what's popular? What's the trend? The trend is Ambrosonide. Ugh. There we go. So shortcuts of shortcuts of being under the. Anyway, we hope we won't leave budget. another nine months. No, we'll, we're going to be back very soon. Although we might back. be expecting. I'm not sure. I'm having a baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's what, a long video. Look at that. One hour, seventeen minutes. Yeah, it's been emotional. That's amazing. Uh, but we want to spend some proper time with you guys because yeah. we missed you. So it's nice to see you. Yeah. Until next time. Bye. Happy sniffing.